Hello everybody and welcome back. So the Sephora sale is here once again and I'm going to be going over my top recommendations with you. So I'm going to go over this video a little differently. I usually recommend a few products in every category, but I took a peek at my last VIB video and I would say it's still up to date. So I wanted this video to be its addition. That way it's not so repetitive. So the products included in today's video are mostly new favorites since that point with a few repeats of course because I'm only me and I couldn't help but include them. So I have some skincare, some hair care, some fragrances, and of course some makeup to go over. And I'll quickly put up the sale dates on screen so you can take a screenshot of them. And a portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by Belief, which is really exciting because I love my Belief products. Let me tell you. But before I do, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Let's just start off with the skincare. So this is my favorite daytime moisturizer. This is the Belief The True Cream Aqua Balm. It's a very gentle, cooling, and refreshing gel moisturizer. Whenever I apply this, it feels like a, a nice, tall, chilled glass of water for my skin. It hydrates my skin the perfect amount, but what I love the most is how lightweight it feels on my skin. Because I do have an oilier complexion, so I need something that feels really light and that's not going to weigh down my skin. Makeup applies gorgeously on top of this, which is obviously very important to me. It never alters the appearance of makeup. It goes on very smoothly on top of this moisturizer. It's the perfect prep for my skin. And this moisturizer works best for those of you who have combo, oily, or normal skin types. And if you have a drier skin type, they do have the moisturizing balm, which I would recommend checking out if you do have that skin type. I also wanted to add that this is an ideal moisturizer for the summer since it has that cooling and lightweight feel. This has been my go-to for almost a year now. It is phenomenal. You've heard me rave about this before. This is the Belief the True Cream Aqua Balm Sunscreen. What makes this really unique is that it's a two-in-one SPF and it's an SPF 50, which is amazing. And this texture is inspired by the Aqua Balm, so it feels really lightweight and hydrating, but it's not too heavy. And the best thing for me is that it doesn't have a white cast. So again, makeup applies over this beautifully. This has been my number one favorite SPF for ever since it came out. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a while. Yeah, I give this product so much credit. I've had non-stop issues with my skin in recent years, but it's gotten so much better, and I swear it's because of this product. Not only does this protect me, it turned my skin around for the better. I just wanna reiterate that there is no white cast, nor any greasiness. It just is truly the best fuss-free and reliable SPF. These two products have done incredible things for my skin. Of course, I'll have links to them in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. This is another integral product in my morning routine. I go in with this a about three times a week, I would say. This is the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Niacinamide Dark Spot Serum. I've tried many niacinamides in the past, but I always, always turn back to this one. I just prefer its consistency and its finish as well. I find that there's a lot of niacinamides that feel very tacky or sticky or heavy on my skin, whereas this one's the opposite. It doesn't have that tackiness or that heavy feeling, and I feel like this one is the most effective for my skin too. I know it's a little bit more pricey, but since I've cut down my skincare routine to only three products in the morning, I'd rather splurge on them. This has done amazing things for my healing acne scars and my texture. It just super refined my skin and it's made such a drastic difference. It's been such a core product of mine for a few years now. Now let's move into my nighttime routine and I've recently fallen in love with the new Fenty Skin Melt Off Jelly Oil Makeup Melting Cleanser. This one reminds me a lot of the Elemis Cleansing Balm, but just in a thinner consistency and a funner packaging. So you push this little button on top, it's squishy, and some of the product comes out. I'll demo a little bit in here, I don't wanna waste much. So you push the top and a little comes out and it does such an effective job at melting all of your makeup. This does incredible things at dissolving my mascara at the end of the night, and I have been wearing a lot of falsies too, and it really gets that glue dissolved too. This is the first Fenty skin product that I'm actually really, really excited about and that I've been using nonstop. Moving on, my current favorite second cleanse isn't from Sephora, so I'm hopping into toner now. And these are currently only available on Sephora US, but Paula's Choice was recently added to Sephora Canada, and I really hope they add this line in there. 
This is their clear line and these two products have changed my skin drastically as well. So this here is the Paula's Choice Clear Anti-Redness Exfoliating Solution. It has 2% salicylic acid, so it's gentle enough that I can use this a few times a week and this really helps to keep my texture in check as well as the amount of breakouts that I have. And then this here is my nightly moisturizer. Again, it's from Paula's Choice. It's the clear oil-free moisturizer. It makes my skin feel really nice and glow and hydrated and rich and all of that, but it keeps the acne away, which is all I can ask for. So if you have a similar skin type to me, I think that this would be an amazing addition to your nightly routine. So that's it for skincare. I now have two hair care products I wanted to mention. So the first one is the Bumble and Bumble B6 Post-Workout Dry Shampoo Mist. This was a recommendation from one of my best friends and I am so thankful for it. It's awesome. So this is interesting. It's nothing like I've tried before with any kind of dry shampoo because it's wet. <laughs> so once my hair starts getting greasy, I just spray this all over the crown of my head and then I blow dry it in and then it just resets my hair to feeling super, super clean. And it also adds some nice volume at the root as well. But this helps me from building up like powder dry shampoos for like a week. I try to limit my washes because I do have this red dyed hair and with every wash a little bit of the color goes away so I really try to be careful with that so this just helps me in my routine and from adding so much buildup to my scalp throughout the week so I'll use this for like the first two or three days and then I'll switch over to my Moroccan oil dry shampoo that I love so much. So those two products work so well hand in hand and it really helps me from having to wash my hair so often. I will say though that this might not work for everyone, especially if you have curly or coily hair. This might not work with whatever hairstyle you're rocking at the moment, but if you have a similar hair type to me or if you're trying to not have as many washes throughout the week, I think this would be really fitting. And this is the last hair care product I wanted to recommend. This is my favorite hair Hair mask and I go in with it every week on hair wash day. This is the Fable and Main Holy Roots hair mask. It's so rich and repairing and it smells good. It's so smoothing. My hair just looks amazing when I style it afterwards. So what I'll do is I'll oil my scalp with an oil I've mixed. I mix jojoba oil and um, rosemary oil and I just put that all, all over my roots then I dampen my ends and then I run this through clip it up and then I go about my day for a little while I'll either edit for a bit watch a show do whatever but after I wash it out my hair feels so so nice it's so much smoother it's so much tamer it's so easy to style and it just looks shinier. It just has done the most for my ends. And I have to really baby my hair because I do have extensions and I need to provide them with so much extra moisture than my normal hair that grows out of my head because they're not producing their own oils. And these are far down, so I need to baby them like crazy. And this has been such an incredible addition to my hair care routine. Let me know if you'd like to see a video all about my hair care and all of that because I could totally do that for you guys. And I would love to branch out into some more hair care too because it's becoming something I'm very interested in. Now let's move into fragrances. So I have two and an honorable mention <laughs> right over there. You might have noticed it in the background of my recent videos. And they're actually all from the same brand. This has got to be my new favorite fragrance brand. I just adore every fragrance they bring out, but these are my top favorites, okay? My number one is the Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. This I have raved about for months and months and months. It has so many different sides to it. There's a sweet side, there's a mysterious side, and a dark side, and a smoky side. There's a lot of, and I feel like it just smells like me. The first time I sniffed this, I was in love. I was like, this is what I wanted to smell like for years now. It has really fun, interesting notes, and this blend just smells so rich and comforting. I can't say enough good things. And the other one is my new favorite vanilla perfume. I feel like we all need a vanilla perfume, you know? This is Vanilla 28, and I feel like it's on the more mature side of vanillas. It's not super sweet. It's not like our old vanillas that we'd wear when we were younger. You get hit with the sweet notes, but you mostly get this really rich and deep and mysterious vibe from it. So that's how I'm going to describe that scent. <laughs> 
And the honorable mention back there is their newest one, the Yum 33. It's very sweet, which is so unlike me, but the first time I smelled it, it gave me vibes of like a more mature fantasy from Britney Spears. <laughs> That's exactly what came to mind at first. And that was my favorite perfume to wear as a kid. So I feel like there's some nostalgic things in there. But this one's notes are pistachio, gelato, hazelnut, sweet rum, whipped cream, marshmallow, and cotton candy. I will say I don't really smell pistachio. I will honestly say I don't know what pistachio smells like. I get more of like the hazelnut, cotton candy, marshmallow vibe. But there's like a depth to it too that's kind of unexpected from all of these sweet notes. Uh, I would definitely recommend you sniffing all of these in person. I don't want you to like risk it by purchasing it online unless if I really swayed you with my mediocre fragrance descriptions, but these are currently my top three. <laughs> so now let's get into the makeup recommendations. I have this primer from Iconic London. This is the Underglow Blurring Primer. So. Usually I'm not much of a primer person, but this one took me by surprise. So it first feels like this really rich and silky serum, and it also offers a lot of glow, similar to like a sheerer glow booster, I would say. And then if you just leave it to set for a few minutes, it kind of dries down. But then if you leave it to set for a few minutes, it develops into this beautiful, velvety, poreless look, and it becomes the most perfect canvas for the rest of your makeup application. It pairs beautifully with other foundations, of course, but it's best suited for the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint, which is another big favorite of mine. This is such a lovely skin tint. If you are familiar with the Fenty Beauty eavesdrops, you will love this. Maybe even a little bit more like I do. I was an eavesdrop lover and I never thought I was going to replace my love for that product. And then here it is. Here is the replacement. <laughs> it makes your skin look so velvety and smooth and soft and corrected. And you can also build up this skin tint to almost a medium coverage, I would say. You can adjust it, it just offers so much. I have another foundation that I quickly fell in love with. This is the Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation. This one also has SPF 25, which is always a plus, but always wear your SPF underneath anyways. Don't just rely on a foundation to cover you for SPF. I would categorize this one right in between the Dior Forever Skin Glow and the Makeup Forever HD Skin. It has the glowiness and the longevity that the Dior has, but that kind of undetectable, beautiful skin finish that the Makeup Forever HD Skin has. It just combines the best of both worlds for me, and it just stands off on its own. It's one that I reach for often. It's actually the foundation I'm wearing all over my skin today. It's just very easy to work with. And again, I love me a good, reliable, and adjustable foundation. You can build this one up again with ease. It just fills in all of my boxes, so I highly recommend checking this one out. This is the Rare Beauty Under Eye brightener. First of all, I love the applicator. It applies the perfect amount. You don't apply too much to your under eyes. I just add a little dot in the inner corner and a little dot on the outer corner and it's very cooling at that because it has this beautiful metal applicator, but it has such a brightening effect that it looks like it corrects more than it actually does, but this does have a good amount of coverage for an eye brightener, so I get away with using just this. I also like to throw it on the rest of my face as well if I need a little brightening or a little pick-me-up if I'm not going to be wearing any foundation. It's been amazing, and it's what I've been reaching for most days. The texture is what keeps me reaching back for it. It feels like it's going to be a little too emollient or glowy feeling, but it does set down and it just smooths out the areas where you apply this. Now let's get into bronzers and contours. I have a few here actually. So first up, of course, I just had to mention this one real quick. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I use the shade Light Medium the most often. As you can see, very often. <laughs> it's so nice. It just melts into your skin and whatever base you have going on, whether it's no foundation or the most full coverage foundation ever, it just looks seamless and so gorgeous. It's such a unique product because it suits whatever look I have going on. It's truly magic in a pan. This next product I would say is very similar to the Makeup by Mario product I was just talking about. It's the Tower 28 Sculptino. I use the shade Getty. Um, I would say it's very similar but more pigmented. So if you want more oomph and more definition, try this out. If you're familiar with Tower 28's products like these, 
you're going to get along with this one no problem. This is another product I just had to quickly mention in today's video. I just didn't feel comfortable not including them, but these are the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks. My two favorite shades are Amber and Amber Suede. Amber is the best contour ever. It's that one right here, and Amber Suede is still kind of like a contoury bronzer. This perfectly matches my undertone, and I feel like it would look really good on those of you who have more olive undertones because it is so yellowy, but there's also some green in there if you can see that. Um, but these are awesome. They feel very powdery when it comes to cream bronzers. They're very easy to blend out, but they have that gorgeous soft matte texture that lasts really well throughout the day because it just grips onto whatever you have going on. And the last bronzer slash contour I have here is the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick in the shade Bright Side. This is one of their newer colors. I'll swatch it right next to here. It's kind of similar to Amber Suede, but it's a little bit more orange toned, if you can see that, and the finish is different. It has still that kind of powdery feel, but it's more glowy, that's for sure. So if you want something that looks more creamy, this is a great option for you. A little bit of it goes a long way, very easy to apply. You can just draw it onto your face directly and you're not going to have an issue. So now let's talk about blushes. So the first one I wanted to recommend is this one from Say. This is such a special blush to me. I don't know, it just, it holds so much excitement for me. It's the shade Chili. This is the perfect chili shade. That is the exact shade I turn when I get cold. But this formula is really, really nice and it's kind of unexpected because it does have that kind of see-through-y, serum-y feel, but it's so pigmented and so even when you apply it on your cheeks. You don't have any patchiness issues, nor does it feel too greasy on your skin. It doesn't disrupt anything you're wearing underneath of your blush. It just stays put and it looks amazing and it actually lasts such a long time for this more glowy, serum-y texture. This is my favorite product from Say, hands down. Of course, I had to mention the girls. These are my two favorite blushes from Rare Beauty. It's the shades Believe and Encourage. One is a little bit more dusty than the other, but they're both kind of similar shades. Um, this one is Believe. And this one is Encourage. Encourage is a little bit softer and a little bit more pink. If you are struggling with finding a cream blush or a liquid blush with longevity, look no further, go to these. They're so pigmented and they just stay all day. And this is the last blush formula I have to recommend. This is the House Labs Color Fuse Blushes. My two favorite shades are Dragon Fruit Days and Hibiscus Haze. Hibiscus Haze and Dragon Fruit Days. The best part about these blushes is that they seem very intimidating and they might seem like they're going to be like absurdly pigmented, but they're not. They have great pigmentation and you can build them up so easily. I'm wearing the shade Hibiscus Haze on my cheeks today. It's this stunning kind of burnt pink color, um, but my number one favorite is of course this one right here. It's such a gorgeous, rich and vibrant cool pink. These are some of my top favorite purchases probably ever. I am enthralled by these. I feel like I could sit here and talk about them for 20 minutes straight. But moving past blushes, I have one highlighter, which is rare. I have not, oh, and it's actually by Rare Beauty, that's funny. Um, I haven't been into highlighters much, but this one has changed my mind. I love how unique this one is. It's such a silky texture. It's so soft. When you swatch it, you feel like you're not touching anything almost. This one is a little bit on the more glimmery side, which usually isn't my tastes, but it's so smoothing and it's so consistent. There's not like different sized pearls or glitters or anything of the sorts in there. It's all very uniform. I just get so excited to pull these out. My favorite thing about them is that they're so reflective, but when the light's not hitting it, you can't see it at all. Like it doesn't look like a chalky streak across your cheek or anything of the sorts. It's very seamless, but it's so impactful at the same time. My two favorite shades are Mesmerize and Exhilarate. Exhilarate is the one I just swatched. It's the more goldy color and Mesmerize is the pinky one. Now let's jump into eye products. And surprisingly, I have some eyeshadow palettes here. I have not been strucken by an eyeshadow palette in so long until these two came around. 
These are the Huda Beauty Matte Obsessions. So this is the cool one and the warm one. I featured these so much on my channel recently. My favorite thing about these is that there are a few different formulas. Although they're all matte, there are some cream to powders, which just increase the versatility of both of these palettes. So you're able to really get some dramatic looks or some more soft glam looks. And they're just laid out perfectly. You can create so many different looks with both of these. You're not just stuck doing one look every single day. They're very inspiring and very versatile. I've used them so much since I've got them. I have some eyeshadow sticks here. These are the Bobbi Brown Longwear Cream Shadow Sticks. I wear these so often. I'm actually wearing both of them on my eyes today with a little bit of something else coming up. I'm wearing the shades Taupe and Bark. Those are my two shades I have so far. I'm definitely thinking of expanding my collection. These are really nice and long wearing. They're very ultra creamy so they're super easy to blend and you have a lot of working time before they set down to this matte texture that does not budge throughout the day they're just incredible so if you just want to use some quick sticks you're going to love these i have some eyeliners here this one here is the huda beauty life liner quick and easy liner in the shade very brown this is my favorite liner to do inner corner extensions with this is the best it's super waterproof and it's never going to transfer or leak or anything I often wash my face and it will still be there afterwards. Amazing. It's the best for that application purpose. There's also a black one, of course, but I use this one most often because it just is a bit softer than black and I think it's just a little more flattering for my tastes. And I've recently fallen in love with the Makeup Forever Artist Pencils and these deeper colors for eyes. These are amazing for sketching out your eyeliner looks, especially if you're more into the smoky looks. These are awesome because they're kind of powdery in a sense. They're very easy to blend out, very pigmented, and they have that matte texture, which is so lovely. Um, so this is the shade Limitless Brown. I also love Whatever Black. It is so black and dark. And also Versatile Chestnut is really fun on the eyes. It kind of gives me kind of like black cherry vibes. It looks really flattering whenever I wear that color on my lips. It just ties it in kind of a more monochromatic look. Sorry, I was just checking to see if my camera was still alive. These are awesome and you have unlimited playtime, but they don't smudge. And I have very oily eyelids, so I'm just blending them out here. So you can see they stretch a lot. So I love using these as bases or as eyeliners or to enhance some looks. Awesome. And of course, they're incredible on the lips. My favorite shade as of right now is Wherever Walnut. I'm nuts about these. I have expanded my collection so much throughout the year. These are the Urban Decay Moondust eyeshadows. My two favorite shades are Space Cowboy, which I'm wearing today, and Cosmic, which is a nice snowy white. So Space Cowboy has a little bit of a bronzy base to it that's very, very smooth, and it has this gorgeous goldy and silvery reflective glitter, and Cosmic has a sheer base, but this gorgeous white silvery reflect to it. These are perfect if you want kind of that topper. It's very sheer. It's just going to enhance what you have going on. It's not going to be like a metallic shadow. It's just going to be like a sheer wash of pixie dust. And I love that. I, Whenever I wear these, I get nonstop compliments and questions on what I'm wearing. These are treasures, treasures in the makeup industry. I have two mascaras. So the first one is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. This one is incredible. It has every single quality I look for in a mascara. So it's volumizing, it's lengthening, it keeps the curl of my lashes, it's lightweight throughout my lashes. It doesn't smudge, flake, or do any of those annoying mascara things. And I can get away with wearing this on my lower lashes as well. It's very buildable. It's not going to just give you that no makeup makeup vibe. Although you can get that look, you can also get a full glam, beautiful volume, false lash effect with this. And my other favorite is the Lancome Lashy Dull Mascara. I've had a wild trajectory with this. I hated it in the beginning, but now I am completely obsessed with it and I've gone through so many tubes of this mascara. 
It's one of the best. It kind of gives me similar vibes to this one, but I would say that this one is even more curling and even more dramatic. I feel like it has kind of like a darker pigment to it. So it just brings my lashes more. Now let's end this video with some lip products. I have quite a few here. So let's start off with lip liners. I wanted to give another quick shout out to the Huda Beauty Lip Contours 2.0s. Um, my number one favorite shade is Pinky Brown, but honestly the entire range is beautiful and I think there's something for everyone and the formula is so nice and creamy, but it ends up drying down so you're not going to get any feathering or leaking from your other lip products nor this lip liner. Well, I'm wearing the shade Pinky Brown around my lips, of course. Like, what else? <laughs> but this is another lip liner I've quickly fallen for. It's the Tower 28 multi liner so you can use these on your eyes as well i hope they bring out more shades because they currently have three but i feel like they need to up that um, my two favorite shades for my lips though are fill me in and work of art fill me in is currently in one of my purses i have no idea where it is but i'll quickly swatch work of art for you it kind of is stripped down vibes from mac so it has that kind of yellowy undertone but this more browny softy color. It's lovely. These are really nice. I would say they're like a perfect blend of the MAC lip liners and the Makeup Forever lip liners. They lie between those somewhere. Two very classics, easy to love. But now let's finally get into my lip products and I have three of them to recommend. The first one is the Clarins Lip Oil. I finally tried these out. I know they've been hyped up online for years. I don't know why I was so bratty and resistant towards this product, but I finally tried it and I'm completely obsessed. I have the shade Strawberry, which I believe is what really started my obsession with strawberries. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells like those yogurt candies, which the cutest thing ever. My editor, Haley, bought me those candies for my birthday. Such a sweet like little present. It meant so much to me. I nearly cried. It was ridiculous over these little candies. I just thought it was so thoughtful and cute. I get so jealous of people who are so good at giving gifts. I struggle with it so much. I really, really need to think about it, but just that little gift, it meant so much. Anyways, I'm getting on a tangent. So nice. It's so slippy and so glossy. It's kind of a cool formula because it feels like one that will feather and leak all over your lips because it's that thin and slippy, but it stays on your lips so well. It's just everything that you want in a lip oil. I had to mention these, <laughs> you know I did. These are the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. Serums, not the colors. That's another reason why I wanted to quickly talk about these. These are the way to go. The ones that look like little lip balms. They're so glassy and glossy and all of it. They're slightly plumping. They just offer your lips so much. They just sit really well on your lips too. I quickly wanted to bash <laughs> the lip colors, the newest ones that look like lip glosses. Do not go for those, please. They settle into your fine lines like crazy. They're just the opposite of these. These are magic, those are trash. Probably the worst lip product I have ever tried ever. I rarely return products, but I've printed my return label for those. <laughs> and my last recommended are the new Rare Beauty lip oils. These are everything and more to me. They feel like a luscious, beautiful lip oil. They have that slippy feel, but they stain. So these are super unique to my collection, and they remind me a lot of some other products just in a lip oil form. So if you're familiar with the Lancome lip lacquers or the e.l.f. glossy lip stains or the Fenty Beauty lip stains, they stain like that, but they have a lip oil on top. And the colors are so cute and flirty. These have become my favorite for day to day. Sometimes I'll just wear it around the perimeter of my lips so it stains as a lip liner, and then I'll just wear like a lip balm or something, and it's so cute. I have just been rocking these every single day since I've gotten them. I'll highlight some of my favorite colors. Oh, I'm actually wearing one of them underneath here. Before I put on that Clarins lip oil, I was wearing the shade Happy. So these are the most long wearing lip oils I have ever tried because of that staining quality. But here are my top favorites. So Happy, Hope, which is another cute pink, Wander and the shade Affection, which is this deep color. It looks so good with my hair color. Um, I have a swatching reels, TikTok, and short up on everywhere if you wanna see all of these against my skin tone. I hope these come back in stock in time for the sale, but if you can snag one of these, do it because you're going to be so in love 
with them, I promise you. And there we have it. Those are all of my top recommended for the Sephora sale. If you wanna know all of my favorite products, I have a shop my shelf page that has all of my favorites in every category. So if this wasn't enough for you, if I skipped out on a category, check that out. I'll have that linked in the description box, but I quickly wanted to say another huge thank you to Believe for sponsoring today's video. Of course, I'll have links to their products in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And like I just said, I'll have links to everything in the description down below, so feel free to check that out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys!